Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, today's video will be about uh, the guide to the realm of the elderlings. And because there is a lot of special requests, here is Choco Boy. Once again, he is here. Uh, last time he appeared in my video for uh, why you should read Miss Bonchulogy, I called him my Kandra, and today he is my Night Eyes. <laughs> okay, Choco? Hmm? So, The Realm of the Underlings by Robin Hobb is one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, it is a series uh, divided into five series. Uh, it consists of 16 books. The first is Farseer Trilogy, and then Lifeship Traders Trilogy, and then the Tony Man Trilogy and then the Rain Wild Chronicles Quartet, and finally, uh, the Fits and the Fool trilogy. The best recommendation that I can give you if you're in it for the long haul is just to read this in publication order. Basically, just follow this graphic. If you follow this graphic, you can get everything out of it. But besides these 16 books, there is also a novella, and then there is also a collection of short stories. When you should read them, I will let you know in this video, and also, I will be giving my ranking uh, for which series is my favorite in the realm of the Elderlings. So obviously, the first is that you should read is Farseer Trilogy. The Farseer Trilogy consists of Assassin's Apprentice, uh, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. This trilogy is definitely necessary, especially if you want to read Tony Man Trilogy and the Fits and the Fool Trilogy. Those two trilogy, I don't think you can read them without reading Farseer Trilogy first. It is an introduction to this world, and there are so many important characters appearing here for the first time, like Fitz, Burich, uh, Patience, the Fool, and Night Eyes. Right, Night Eyes? <laughs> this is a dog of multiple identities. So yeah, first you have to read Farseer Trilogy. Personally, I would rank the Farseer Trilogy at ranking 4 out of 5. So yeah, I think this is one of Robin Hobb's weaker series, but it is necessary to read. Because without this one, as I said, you cannot read Tony Man Trilogy or the Fits and the Full Trilogy. You definitely cannot enjoy them to the fullest. I think Choco is sleeping right now. <laughs> the reason why I rank this one relatively low is that I didn't enjoy Assassin's Quest. Assassin's Quest, on my first read, I think uh, suffer a lot due to pacing issue. And I love Assassin's Apprentice and Royal Assassin. I think ever since the first book, Robin Hobb's prose continue to be delightful to read, and it is so beautifully written. But yeah, I think Assassin's Quest is a book that will be better on reread, so because of that, and especially because this is the conclusion of Farseer Trilogy, so because of that, uh, I rank this one a bit lower than the other series. The second series though, Life Ship Traders, this is also a good starting point. If you don't like Farseer Trilogy, and you still want to get a taste of Robin Hobb's epic fantasy, you can definitely try Live Ship Traders Trilogy. Live Ship Traders uh, takes place after Farseer Trilogy, but it follows almost all the characters are different set of characters from the Farseer Trilogy. And unlike the series that involve Fitz as the main character, uh, this one is written from a third-person point of view and it involves multiple point of view. Uh, for the Farseer Trilogy, Tony Man Trilogy, and the Fitz and the Fool Trilogy, all of them are written in first person through Fitz's perspective. But the Fitz and the Fool Trilogy has a bit of an exception, I will get into that later. This is, in my opinion, the second best series in the realm of the Elderlings. It is that good. It is the one that felt the most epic. This one shows that Robin Hobb can really write large-scale epic fantasy. And I'm not saying that the one that involved Fitz wasn't epic at all, it's not the case, but the one that involved Fitz uh, felt a bit more intimate than the one in Life Ship Traders. The character development in Life Ship Traders was absolutely amazing, and reading this will be necessary for you to read uh, the Rainwald Chronicles Quartet and also the final trilogy. And the Life Ship Traders has some of the best character development that I've ever read. For example, I'm just going to mention one name, Malta. Malta is, wow, her first appearance, I wanna slap her so much, but her character development is stunning, it's so good. She became one of my favorite characters in the entire series. The Life Ship Traders also has a kinda self-contained story, so if you only want to read Life Ship Traders and not continue with the rest of the other series, that's okay too. But yeah, I highly, highly recommend this one because this one is awesome. I almost gave up. I really almost gave up after Assassin's Quest, but that one really didn't work for me on my first read. But reading Ship of Magic immediately rejuvenate my hope in continuing with the rest of the realm of the Elderlings. It is so good. And personally, I recommend this to be read after Farseer Trilogy for cameo reasons I cannot mention. Once you've read Farseer Trilogy and Love Ship Shadow Trilogy, you can immediately jump into Tony Man Trilogy. But personally, I will recommend you to read the prequel novella first. It is called The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince. Now, this one is a prequel to the entire series. It takes place before Farseer Trilogy, but 
this one will give you the necessary context to some of the world building that's talked about in Tony Man trilogy. Also, this novella is actually pretty good. I cannot believe that not too many people actually talk about this book. I think it's a great novella and it enriched my experience of reading Fool's Errand, the first book in Tony Man trilogy. Once you've read the novella, yes, you should read Tony Man trilogy. And the first book in Tony Man trilogy, Fool's Errand, is one of my favorite books in the entire series. It is amazing, it's bittersweet, it's melancholic, and it's, it's just so good. It's really good. And somehow to me, because I read this one after I read the Life Ship Changer trilogy, reading about Fitz again feels like I'm meeting old friends again. Where do I rank the Tony Man trilogy? I rank this at number 3 spot. I think Fool's Errand was absolutely amazing, but Golden Fool and Fool's Fate, they were pretty great too. But I think both of them weren't as good as Fool's Errand. And I know this is an unpopular opinion because Fool's Fate, uh, the final book in this trilogy, is considered by many of the fans as the best book of the entire series. I. I personally disagree because the epilogue in this novel actually didn't really click with me. And that's all I can say about this because uh, to really explain my reason, it would go into uh, spoiler territory. Once you've read the Tony Man trilogy, you should read uh, Rainward Chronicles Quartet. Now, this one is the one that I get asked a lot because, like me, it seems like a lot of people couldn't click with Rainward Chronicles Quartet. And yeah, I, I consider this as the weakest series in the entire realm of the Elderlings. Now, should you read this series? If possible, definitely yes, because I read through them all, but you know what, if you uh, really can't stand the characters in this series, because this one, because Rainwald Chronicles Quartet, to my mind, is different from the other series in the realm of the Underlings. It felt geared toward younger audience, and the first two books uh, were so filled with teenage angst, I, I really couldn't stand it. But at the same time, this is also technically a continuation to the Life Ship Chaters trilogy. So personally, my recommendation is for you to just uh, give the first book a try and see how you feel about it. Because I think at least reading the first book will give you the right context for the final book of the series. But before we get into the final trilogy, and this is not mandatory, if you want, you can read The Inheritance. This is a collection of short stories by Robin Hopp and Megan Lindholm, which is uh, the same person. But this is only if you want to get every single thing out of the realm of the Elderlings, but I don't think this one is necessary. It's definitely not. Not a lot of important events happen here. And once you've read this one, you should go to the final trilogy, which is the Fits and the Full trilogy, and in my personal opinion, the absolute best of the entire series. It is amazing. The entire three book, Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, and Assassin's Fate, all three of them are in my favorite book's shelf. They are so incredible, and it goes to show just how well Robin Hopp knows her characters. It's totally incredible, and it established Robin Hopp as one of the best, maybe the best character-driven fantasy writer. So in the Fitz and the Fool trilogy, we return one more time to Fitz as the main character, but there is an addition. There is an additional one POV character, and her name is B. Both Fitz and B is written from first-person perspective, and the result is absolutely brilliant. The addition of B as one of the main characters gave the series a new relationship dynamic and a breadth of tension. It's amazing. And the final book is the culmination of everything that Robin Hopp has wrote in this entire series, in this entire 16 book series. So it's not only Farsi Trilogy and Tony Man Trilogy, but Life Ship Traders Trilogy and the Rainwild Chronicles Quartet is also included. Every single thing that Robin Hopp has wrote is put into this book. It's a masterpiece and it is one of the best conclusions to a series that I've ever read. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's pretty much all the guide you need. And if you feel intimidated to start this series because, well, 16 books is a lot. And in total, this 16 book series consists of more than 4 million words. But rest assured, this one is actually one of the most accessible uh, epic fantasy series out there. For a big epic fantasy series, it's not as intimidating or difficult like uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen or The Wheel of Time. Robin Hobbs' writing is beautiful and accessible. That's the first thing. And the second thing I think, and this is very important, is the division into five series. I think that one is very important. Dividing it into five series make this large series so much more easier to access and less intimidating. Seriously, The Realm of the Elderlings is one of the best fantasy series out there, and I'm actually missing the character so much. I hope one day I will get the time to finally uh, do a second read of the entire series because I have a feeling that I will love this series even more. So yeah, that's it for me today. If you have read this series, please let me know what do you think about this reading order. I think it is the best reading order. The publication order is really the best reading order. And what do you think about this series? As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Choco, say bye-bye. Bye-bye.